Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we are taking a look at a Parker Hale 22 conversion system for originally the Lee Enfield, but one that was also adapted to both the Lewis and the Vickers guns. Which is pretty cool. This was actually originally adopted by the British government as a formal 22 conversion system in July of 1918, so right at the end of World War II. Uh, 22 caliber conversions were of course a handy training tool that allowed you to practice marksmanship in a basically without needing a full-size rifle range. So this sort of thing made it possible to do marksmanship training indoors, and that that was really a valuable tool for getting a little bit of, of rifle practice in uh, before you moved up to full power cartridges with new recruits. And the same thing applies to the Vickers and the Lewis conversions as well. Now the fundamental idea of this was a little different than all, pretty much all of the other British 22 trainers. So let me show you exactly how this worked. The basic idea here was that you would take a totally standard service rifle, uh, presumably one with a worn out barrel, you would bore out the barrel and reline it with a soldered in 22 caliber tubular insert. However, you would leave the chamber, the original 303 chamber, intact. And then you had a handful of these adapters. These, of course, are the same basic profile as a 303 cartridge. They will fit in the 303 chamber, and if I pop this apart, what you do is you drop a 22 rimfire cartridge in the base here. You have this spring-loaded plug that goes behind it, and there's a little rimfire firing pin on that. So this sits in here. When you fire the rifle, the firing pin of the rifle hits the back of this and pushes it forward just enough through that spring-loaded detent to fire the 22 that's inside. Here's an example here, we have the, the sort of 22 long rifle that you would use. There's nothing special about this really, this is just any 22 long rifle cartridge will work. And when it fires, uh, the bullet will travel through this unrifled section of the cartridge adapter. It will then hit the new barrel insert in the rifle, which is rifled. Um, you don't really see much loss of accuracy, a little bit, uh, because of that much freebore, uh, but then the rifle shoots, the sights are used just like a standard full-size rifle. So this is a commercial example of one of the rifle conversions. Uh, it's been marked DP, that means the rifle was taken out of service as a drill purpose rifle, um, but it'll serve just fine as a 22 conversion, and those markings have been overstamped with Parker Hale's markings. Uh, Parker Hale 303 come 22 inch system. You can see very clearly here at the muzzle how they have uh, drilled out the original 303 barrel and replaced it with a rifled 22 liner. They had to do a little bit of modification to uh, the front of the magazine in these rifles simply because the front of this cartridge adapter doesn't quite have the same profile as an actual cartridge, which would have a pointed you know, a pointed bullet on it, which helps it feed a little better. So they modified the magazine feed lips just a little bit to ensure feeding with the new cartridges. And if you look down into the chamber there, you can see that it's clearly a full-size 303 chamber, just one that simply drops into, or next down to, a 22 caliber bore. In addition to the rifle, we have a an original cased set uh, of components for a Vickers gun conversion using the exact same system. So. Uh, barrel, Parker Hale, this originally said 303 come 22 for the caliber conversion. And if we open this guy up, inside we've got 10 of our cartridge adapters, we've got our Vickers barrel, we have a cleaning rod here, we actually have the original packing slip. So we have 10, they called them containers for the cartridges, loading rod, the unloading tool, which is this little guy. This is for manually uh, taking the cartridges apart. There was actually a, a proper uh, like a, a hand lever tool that made it a lot easier to pop rounds in and out, and unfortunately I don't have that to show you. Uh, an oil can, a, pat, a uh, box of cleaning patches, and of course the chest. Are your cleaning patches. And 
your oil can. <clears throat> if we take a closer look at the barrel, there's a lot of grease on this, but that is clearly a 303 caliber, a 303 cartridge sized chamber with a 22 caliber barrel liner sweated in there. And this is marked Parker Rifled, where the R is shared between the two, so it's like Parker Rifled uh, AGP. Now I don't have the case for it, but they did also sell this for the Lewis gun, and here we have a Lewis gun barrel. You can see that is proofed, 303-22, and again it has a 303 chamber. So that just drops right in like that. Now in the Vickers and the Lewis, there is no way that a 22 was going to have enough power to actually cycle the operating system of the guns. And it didn't, and they just, they were, Parker Hale was very upfront about that. Uh, the training practice involved with this, uh, you would just manually cycle the rifle for each shot. So it gave you a little bit of marksmanship practice, I imagine this would be quite, ha quite useful uh, with the Lee Enfield rifles, it would be moderately useful with a Lewis gun, and to me it seems kind of not all that helpful with a Vickers gun, but um, I suppose you can actually go through loading procedure and safety and firing drill and all that sort of thing with this. So, uh, this is actually pretty similar to the system that the French would use on their 22 caliber Moss 36 trainers, uh, which would come much later. Uh, those came in the 1930s, where this was originally developed in 1918. Uh, the one significant difference is with the French trainers, the cartridge runs all the way out at the front of the adapter, and the bullet sticks out the front, so it engages directly into rifling, where on this the cartridge is positioned in the back of the chamber adapter, and so it goes through a long unrifled tube before it gets to uh, the barrel rifling. The Lewis is a gas operated gun of course, so the original Lewis barrel that they converted here had a gas port in it, and you can see that the liner uh, they, they've just run the liner right past the gas port, um, there was no need to actually tap gas off the 22. The disadvantage of this system is that it's really kind of a laborious thing to load and unload these charger adapters, and if you've got a whole squad of guys who are going through marksmanship practice, uh, you're going to have a whole bunch of other guys uh, well and truly occupied keeping cartridge adapters uh, loaded for them. The advantage is you can load these into the rifle magazine, you can actually use these in stripper clips, just like you would with normal cartridges. Uh, the bolt throw of the rifle is full length, and all of your training drill is properly duplicated just without the, the noise and the recoil and the ballistic danger of full power cartridges. So you can do very realistic training with this. Uh, other 22 caliber rifles, the ones that were just single shot, tend to have a bolt throw that only needs to be about that long uh, to cycle a, just a plain 22 caliber cartridge through. This gives you the real full experience. In 1920 the system was declared obsolete by the British military, that would be the rifle system, uh, and it would be replaced the next year by the rifle number 2 Mark IV Star, which was just a single shot, a simpler single shot 22 caliber training rifle. However, the Parker Hale Company would keep this system in their catalogue into the 1930s and offer it for sale for all three different platforms, so it's really cool to get a chance to look at all three of them side by side here, because well, it's a neat system. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, thanks for watching.